Good morning. Welcome to AM Sports here with me, Muftao Nabila Abda. It's been 10 days uh, following reports that Ghana player Christian Chu was trapped under rubble in Turkey, following an earthquake. Um, since uh, last week, Monday, the player's whereabouts is still unknown. This is according to his agent, and he's been speaking to Sky Sports, and this is what he's been saying. So we bring to you what Christian's accused agent, Nana Setri, has been telling the media following the disappearance of his player. He says it has been nine days. This interview was conducted yesterday where he said it has been nine days since the earthquake and we still have not located Christian. I'm at the quick side in Hatai with Christian's family. The scenes are unimaginable and our hearts are broken for all various reasons. During my time here, we have been able to locate Christian Achu's exact room location, and we have found two pairs of his shoes. Uh, that is what he's saying, but they've not been able to find Christian Achu himself, despite locating his room and getting uh, seeing two pairs of his shoes. This is a difficult situation, and we are extremely grateful to all the Turkish and foreign rescue teams, local civilians and volunteers for their efforts, and response in rescuing survivors. However, we urgently need more resources, including a translator on the ground. He added that um, yesterday, which happened to be Monday, we received uh, uh, information that uh, Christian, uh, there were about five people who were still alive within where Christian Achu uh, was, but uh, they, they need to see the human being. He said their position and influence accompanied with their local knowledge would be extremely helpful. We implore the president of the club and mayor of Hatai um, to provide additional resources to, spend up, uh, to speed up the uh, rescue as a priority. That is what the agent of Christian Achu has been saying following the disappearance of his player, which happened uh, last week, Monday. It's been 10 days since the incident happened. His whereabouts still unknown, but two pairs of his shoes have been found. Oh, take it up. Things are moving. He said, uh, Now let's hear from uh, former Black Stars goalkeeper Fatal Dauda. He's been speaking about the appointment of Chris Hutton as the next head coach of the senior national team, the Black Stars. According to him, the decision of the Ghana Football Association to name the former Newcastle and uh, Norwich City boss is in the right direction. The team, when they went to the World Cup, even during the qualifiers, um, now the national team, we are, the Black Stars, we have the same technical team. It's only Otoado is out. So I think they are going to continue with their philosophy. We saw where they play in the World Cup. For, for a very long time, you don't see the blaster playing a game, starting build from the back. But in this World Cup, they did it. When coach went there, when Otado was, I know they would do it because they are all from this organization. So uh, trust me, with the intelligent players that the, 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 the national team have now, young guys who are playing, running, will do well. We will we'll, we'll play like when we used to play football before, how people know Ghana to play. We are going back to it and then, inshallah, you know, to win a game, you have to get a formula. The, some of the formulas are how to pass, how to press, how to defend, how to, a lot. So you have the formula, you win is possible. Sometimes you may have the players, but you can't win trophy. Why? Because they don't use the formula. That can give you the win. You understand? So I think uh, the FA have done well by uh, uh, giving the, the, the job to uh, uh, Chris. He was here before. Did they invite him to come here? He was happy to come and see how the structure here is. So I think he's a nice man. Uh, I don't know him, but I've uh, watched him from afar, what he did in the English Premier League and other things. So I think we should just support him and then all of us will achieve and then uh, uh, we, 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 we get what we want for the country. And on the same national team, the Black Stars, former defender of Manchester City, Julian Lescott, he's been acknowledging the quality of the senior national team. He says he's a keen follower of Ghana football and believes that the Black Stars 
It's a very strong brand. He's been speaking to my colleague, Michelle Quino. The Black Stars, I'm aware of, of who they are and what they represent and um, the progression over, what, 10, 15 years now? Obviously, Michael Essie and stuff, mm -hmm. some of the bigger names and obviously, Suleiman Tari's. I'm aware of the stars um, and what and how inspirational they are for, for Ghana uh, as a country and as a whole in Africa. I, I think that's one thing that impresses me is as much as they represent Ghana or other players represent other countries, they represent the, the continent of Africa and you're all kind of warm to that and yeah. that is impressive because I don't think there's many, if any other continent in the world that recognises their talent as well as, as well as Africa. Oh great. And uh, right now you're, let's say, focusing more into youth football and that brings you to this, uh, with Wolves you won player of the season twice so from the academy, you yeah, have a very prestigious group of people, no many do that in the Premier League especially. Mm -hmm. And so, looking at youth football, you mentioned Ghana being a very big brand, but at the moment, it's a bit you know, difficult on the local football terrain because some things are not being done right. Uh, <coughs> which aspects of youth football do you think uh, need to be focused on more to ensure that the talents are hmm. you know, reaching their full potential? It's a tough one, again, because I'm sure there's other countries that are, feel the same in regards to developing talent, and everybody, when it is developing, that has a limited amount of patience and I think that's the most important thing it needs to people need to understand that not everyone develops at the same speeds at the same time so if one player is at their peak at 18 that doesn't mean every other player should be the same it, it, as I said it wasn't until later on in, in players careers that they, they hit their peak so patience is a key is key for me in regards to developing and, and understanding um, the fundamentals um, obviously the, um, the hard work it goes without saying. I think there's a lot of talent in mm -hmm. Africa um, and everywhere else, but in regards to having a career, it's consistency for everyone. Uh, I think the message is the same in regards to the hard work, desire and consistency. So besides your two Premier League titles, which obviously <laughs> among the highlights of your career, unfortunately you, are on the, you also suffered you know, periods of relegation. Yeah. Uh, the Southampton comes to mind and also with Wolves, all of that season you were a bit injured and all mm. of that. And, uh, at the moment, we have one youth player, Kamaldin Suleiman. I just completed a move to Southampton. So, yeah. You, you from had, yeah, from Rennes. Yeah, yeah. about 20, club record for 25 million euros. And at the moment, it, with where the club is, is now looking like with this young player coming in, banging hopes on him to ensure that the club uh, escape relegation. So how is that feeling playing the club, which is battling to fight relegation? Yeah, it's tough. It is tough. Um, there will be an expectation, but I'm sure the expectation, the club and everyone else puts him on him won't be the same as he puts on himself. I'm sure he expects to do well and hopes to do well, so hopefully that is the case for him. Um, and it's, a, it's not a short-term project. They haven't signed him just for the last six months of this season. Um, the, the model that Southampton are using is, is similar to the one of Dortmund in regards to trying to recruit younger players um, to try and develop them, so I'm sure that's the case with him. And, I'm sure he just wants to play. Um, the opportunity to, to play in the Premier League, regardless of who it's for, is a big opportunity for everyone. So hopefully he does well and, and shines a, a great light on, on the Ghana football. The full interview will be aired on Sports Today when you do join us at 2 p.m. That was Julian Lescott speaking to my colleague, Michelle Aquino. Let's talk some uh, tennis now and Ghana's wheelchair tennis team. They were robbed in Nigeria and three of them were badly injured. They've been narrating their ordeal to Joyce Sports. Basically, uh, they, are, they are currently in, in Accra now. They got into the country last night at, at 11 p.m. And so they are currently in Accra now. Uh, the one who had the the severe uh, cuts with the with the windscreen uh, glasses is, is being sent to the hospital now and he's currently undergoing some treatment we just hope that he he would be able to um it's, it, it it looks like a minor cut though but we wouldn't want to take any chances so he's going to the hospital now and and we are attending they are attending to him now apart from that the other players were having some back pains and then we got some some physios to to do some massaging for them but currently as i speak to you all of them are at their class for stadium tennis courts now waiting for their colleague to return from the hospital I mean, are they receiving any psychological support? Because uh, to have gone through this, obviously they're going to have a bit of trauma. Have you made arrangement for them to receive any psychological support before they even return to their families? 
So um, for now, because because we have limited funding for such services, so we've not really gotten any professional understanding. But however, when the news broke up, we've gotten calls from from Nigeria. That's the president of the the president of the Nigerian Nigerian Tennis Federation called to to sympathize with us and also ask that if anything if he can do anything for us. So that was the first thing we got from Nigeria, which I think is is, is very very good. And then we also had an, a call from the International, International Tennis Federation Watch Tennis Department. And then they also had a call with us and they also tried to look at, see how best they can help us. So we've informed them that yes, they are now in Ghana now and then they are seeing how best, if in case there are any help we need, then they will still try to help us. Because tra trust me, funding is very difficult for the implementation of World ten Tennis here in Ghana. And we only get support from the International Tennis Federation. We, it's, it's very hard for us to even get support from our own uh, mother institution, that is the Ghana Tennis Federation, or the National Sports Authority, or the Ministry of Youth and Sports. So we, we we heavily depend on the International Tennis Federation for some of these supports. The the president of the National Parliament Committee of Ghana has also showed uh, has also called to to sympathize with the team and seeing uh, is trying to see how best he can also support us. And then we have also other uh, uh, tennis uh, development uh, partners, plus the PM Sports. There's also the some executive from the Ghana Tennis Federation Board uh, has also called to see what they are, how they are faring, but we've not really received any 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 professional uh, 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 attention from 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 let's say the psychologist or any other group. Well, we have it is an election year for the Ghana Football Association, and some lots of conversations have been happening behind the scenes, and some interesting names have popped up as potential uh, aspirants for the position of president of the Ghana Football Association. Um, maybe as and when they settle on who they would want to support to contest for the position of the president, we would be here to tell you the story. But one of such people is the chief executive officer of Kumasi Asante Kodoko, Nanayo Amponsa, and his administrative manager, Emmanuel Newton Dasubre. That's all we have for you this morning for sports. You can head on to myjoyonline.com and read some more sports stories.